Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, it's December. The holidays are here. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening. We've got a lot of things to talk about. This is our holiday edition. Here we go. Can you believe it's December already? Oh my gosh. Boy, this year's gone by fast. And, of course, uh, one of the main things I've uh, asked folks uh, this this month especially, uh, as RVers, if you're uh, RVing right now, we'd love to hear how you celebrate your Christmas or Hanukkah, I guess it would be also. Um, and uh, do you do, do you celebrate in the Christmas, you know, Christmas mode in the RV or do you uh, go see family? Uh, do you set up a Christmas tree? Uh, how much do you put up for decorations? Do you put lights on your RV? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, lots of questions about that. So I, I wanted to kind of tell you a funny story about um, my kids. And uh, when we raised our kids, we had a traditional Christmas and uh I I guess the one thing that wasn't traditional, and this came from my father, and I don't know where this came from, probably my mother's idea, but for stockings, we used nylons. (laughs) So I remember every year, my mom would keep her old nylons, and we'd cut the legs off, and that would be what we used for our stockings every year, which was as a kid, that was awesome because you'd be amazed just how much, how many goodies uh, uh, Santa can get into those stockings. <laughs> Which, uh, boy, I tell you, in the mornings we'd wake up and go to our fireplace, and these stockings would be just loaded with stuff. I would be like, uh, I mean, you're talking like two, three feet long, foot long uh, stockings that are. Uh, usually laying on the floor because they're too heavy to hang up anymore. And our names are, got little name tags on them all. And <laughs> I remember I'd get, you know, oranges and I'd get bubble bath and I'd get uh, um, just crazy, usually things like batteries and all that. And so we always uh, got our stock, you know, opened our stockings first. And, of course, my mom and dad always tried to make me last, uh, and my sister, and uh, <laughs> which was just torture. And then as we're pulling these things out of these giant stockings, and you'd be amazed what could fit in the stockings, uh, you'd get all kinds of things that may not necessarily make sense. Like, you'd get, like, batteries. And it's like, why would I get batteries? Or why would I get a... Uh, something that just didn't really seem like a gift at the time. But uh, what was kind of funny is uh, usually they tied in with the presents under the tree. And so that was always fun. So the funny part I wanted to pass on about this is, of course, I did this for my kids. And so my kids, uh, you know, they'd find Barbies and uh, Ninja Turtles and batteries (laughs) and things like that. Uh, and any oddball thing that we could put in there. And of course, it'd always be like a grapefruit in it, or sometimes uh, I think when you were put pineapples in it. <laughs> so you could get a lot in a stocking. They stretch a lot. I think there was actually a Monopoly game in one once. So, yeah. So, uh, so for the years and years that our kids had a traditional Christmas, they had the stocking, I mean, the real pantyhose thing going on. And so, um, so the funny thing was, is my daughter, uh, I'm not sure so much with my son, but with my daughter, she passed that tradition on and kind of modified her extended family and um, uh, anyway, <laughs> to do the same thing. And so I remember her calling and uh, and, and the, the, new, the kids, they're, they're a family of blend, kind of like a Brady Bunch thing. 
And so it was, uh, they were kind of used to Christmas being kind of just non traditional. And she came in and says, like, no, we're going to do it this way. But the funny thing was, she'd call me up and say, I hate you, Dad. <laughs> It's like, why? And she go, because these stockings cost a fortune to fill. <laughs> and they do. Oh, my gosh. That's why you want to get like, you just got to think about it. You got a big family and you got to fill nylon stockings. Oh, my gosh. You're looking at a good three, four, five hundred dollars $500. Um, so, yeah, that was why you would see like, fruit anything it could take up as much space as possible on those stockings <laughs> i mean full-size bubble bath or shampoos or thing, anything you could do to fill those son of guns and uh, box candy and things like that and so uh, these things are humongous and uh to this day they do that and it's so awesome and uh uh in fact we got to you know those of you who have followed our journey to arizona last year we got to have christmas with our, our daughter and that's when we got to see that and when we got there we had two stockings for us and so we we did you know uh santa went shopping on their own and uh gave a grocery bag to uh to our daughter uh and uh next morning when we showed up and the family was up uh all those stockings were there and included grandma and grandpa and uh uh, <laughs> just to take care of grandma and grandpa, I'm going, oh my goodness, I've forgotten how expensive this could be. <laughs> and, anyway, but there, it's so funny. Oh my gosh. So yeah, if you if you ever want to convert your regular little red uh, stockings to nylons, they're a lot of fun, but they can be a little expensive. You have to be quite creative. And it kind of works out nice, like especially now when there's like games and stuff, you can be put like a memory chip or something that goes to uh these new games and stuff to having the actual game under the christmas tree and so you know they get these stockings and it's like why did i get this thing and, and then you find out it matches up with something under the tree and that's kind of fun so yeah the holidays are here and then we're fun it's kind of fun to watch the grandkids go through the tradition of our family which is three generations now of using uh, nylons instead of stockings, <laughs> and, uh, um, and uh, I, I guess the other thing is always I remember was so much fun was uh, when the kids were little, you know, the, the rule was you could not go out to the living room till mom and dad are up, and 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 of course the the torture of doing that is just the fun part of it for parents. So, yeah, we kind of, you know, the kids are bouncing on the bed and come on, mom and dad. And we'd really loaf and take our times. And we finally get up, put on our bathrobes and like, well, we can't go there yet until mom and dad have their uh, coffee. Of course, I was the only one who drank coffee. So mom had to have tea. So we'd all loaf into the kitchen and kids are ready to explode. This is like, come on, dad. Come on, mom. And I'd make my coffee and and I'd try to get something to, for the kids to eat or drink. But, but uh, you know, there's this focus. They're peeking around the corner at the Christmas tree and the big stockings on the floor. And uh, they're just ready to explode. And you just drag it on <laughs> and drag it on. And, like, you finally get the coffee. You stir, a, like, sugar in and cream it as slow as possible just to torture the kids a little bit longer. And then finally it's like... Okay, and man, those two just bolt right into the uh, living room, and they're there, and they're just eyes are just gigantic, trying to figure out what's in those big old nylon stockings. And then mom and dad come <laughs> loafing in, kind of settling in, getting the coffee set down on the coffee table, getting a chair, and and then you kind of like look around and goes, well, you must have been good this year because Santa came again, amazing. So. We talk a little bit more, and he's like, "Do you guys remember who's is who's?" And oh yeah, they're screaming and all that stuff. And oh my gosh, it was just great. So we had wonderful Christmases all the time. And then, uh, um, you know, the darn kids had to grow up. Man, I hated that. But yeah, that's that's the special part: memories of Christmas. So um, yeah, so that's um, and then as we got older. Um, it was kind of interesting to see uh, the transition of 
what we did with our families. Of course, you know, as the kids all started getting closer to being teenagers and stuff like that, um, you know, we still had our, you know, our family Christmases. Of course, the kids by then kind of knew how everything worked and stuff. But uh, what we do usually like a Friday night before Christmas, we would have, uh, Sherry had a very large family, so she uh, had um, two sisters and a brother. Of course, and then they all had kids and married and all that stuff. So we'd have uh, either a Friday or a Saturday night family Christmas. And so instead of doing, uh, and then the other thing we always had was, um, and and I advise that maybe you don't let your kids listen to the show too much because, um, you know, I'm talking about the layout of how Christmas works for adults. And uh, anyway, so we had a guy that... Um, came to the house every year and nobody knew who he was except me and Sherry. And uh, uh, we we're so grateful to this special person. His name was Chuck. And uh, he would show up to the house with uh, as, dressed as Santa. So when the kids were little, we also had the family special Christmas uh, party where Santa showed up. And uh, uh, so what would happen is all the parents would come and sneak to me and Sherry um, uh, jammies or pajamas for their kids that were their size and all that, and then had them wrapped and with their names on them. So then I had them all gathered, and then so when I met Santa down, you know, I'd say, well, guys, i got to run to the store get some milk. We're going to run out or something. And I'd go, go actually go meet Santa in a parking lot you know, a couple miles away, give them the big bag of... Uh, uh, pajamas for all the little kids and uh, so then he'd follow me back and then he'd kind of lay back a, uh, from the house a little bit and so about 10-15 minutes after I get home we start getting the kids all uh, hyped up about is Santa coming is Santa coming and it's you know it's dark and they're all looking out the windows and then it's like we're looking I see I think I see lights in the air and of course the kids like Oh, yeah, we see them, too. And uh, we tried to get maybe another uncle to be in the back of the house, pounding on the side of the house, make it sound like that Santa hit, uh, was up on the roof. And the kids are just, you know, hanging off the couch at the backside, looking out the window, and they can swear they can see uh, lights and the whole works. And, I mean, they were verifying it. And sure in heck, they'd be looking up, and then they look down and realize Santa's standing in the front yard, <laughs> creeping around. And it's like, ah, total chaos, and and uh, dogs barking, and it all works, and then Santa comes to the door, and we let him in, and we have a special chair that's all set up for him, and he's got this big bag of goodies, and and, and every year, it same, and it was really cool, it was the same Santa every year for many years, and uh, uh, he'd go through the process of bringing all, all the kids would sit around in a circle, and uh, just just glowing, and uh, each got a chance to go sit on Santa's lap, and then he'd talk to them about how they work, you know, how good they were this year, and and uh, how you know, and joke with them, and then ch joke with them about their parents standing in the background and cameras flashing like crazy. And we actually videotaped, even back in those days, uh, videotaped every single one of those. So it's so neat because we have those archives. And yeah, they're kind of boring to look at <laughs> when you go back, but when you see your kids so little. And I uh, see him so excited about Christmas. And uh, so then, uh, of course, he, you know, the way he pulled the kids up is he pulled a, a, a present out of the uh, bag, his Christmas bag, which was the jammies. And so he'd call up like Tracy and my daughter would go up and uh, he'd uh, talk to her and then hand, give her, her her present, which was pajamas. And then, uh, anyway, we go through the cycle, and then a lot of times uh, he'd also uh, bring the parents up and try to uh, let the kids have fun with their parents and, and see if they've been good all year and stuff and teasing them. So it was really, really special. Then uh, after all the havoc, you know, he said, well, I got to, you know, Rudolph's up there, and and uh, the, kids, <laughs> the kids would run to the refrigerator and give him some carrots or something, and he'd uh, go out the door and, and uh, kids, you know, were not allowed to open their package till Santa left. 
And then as soon as he left, it's like, okay, guys, open your packages. And, oh, my God, paper flying everywhere. And, of course, the kids all got their new jammies, and they all can go in and change and wear their jammies the rest of the night at the house there. And so we had paper everywhere and kids running around with you know pajamas and uh we'd sing some christmas songs and uh um just uh and then of course a lot of times we do what's called our gotcha gifts and so that's when as we got older <clears throat> as some kids got past uh into teenagehood then they graduate into gotcha gifts so depending on how old the, the nieces or nephews were would uh, depend whether they get to be involved in the adult uh, gotcha gifts, in which that was the fun part. At, well, at least for the adults. The adults, you know, there's some big planning going on before that. So a month before the big Christmas party, uh, we would uh, draw names of all the adults that are coming to the Christmas party uh, with the kids. And... Uh, so each person was in charge of a gotcha gift. So it had to be something pertaining to what happened or something that happened to them that year. And so, uh, for example, um, one year, uh, uh, I'll just give you an idea that Sherry's dad got my name. And so I'll just give you an idea how the gotcha gifts went. Is one year we went up to Canada uh, to a resort that we go trout fishing at and it's up in the boonies and you have to go in by four wheel drives and you live in cabins and you go out and fishing. Anyway, we were fishing together one day and uh, <clears throat> we we're out in the big lake, they call Lake Tawil and we we're coming in and we had a great day fishing. We caught lots of fish and I was driving the boat and I was just about into the dock and realized I, I was using a flatfish and it got caught in my shoes and so my feet were locked together with these flatfish in there. And so I stopped the boat, and my father-in-law is just laughing his head off because I can't get my feet apart because of the stupid flatfish I had uh, um, uh, tangled between my shoelaces and my two uh, boot laces. So my feet were literally locked together, and I told him I am in, in this particular trip where we're uh, with a lot of people from the same place we worked, the aerospace company. So, um, you know, we were all teasing each other all the time. And the last thing I was going to do is go into the dock with my feet tied together. And so I'm trying to get my feet. We're floating and kind of drifting all over and out in the booties here. And he's laughing his ass off. Sorry. And uh, so uh, anyway, I finally got my feet freed and stuff. But uh, uh, anyway, of course, I got teased the whole time at the trip about getting my feet tied together with a flatfish. And so, of course, when Christmas came, getting back to Christmas, he made this poem about this mighty fisherman who got his feet tied up in a boat, and he had these two baby shoes on this big plaque, and he colored them a bronze size with this little lure caught between the shoelaces and made this really cool plaque. Oh, my gosh, he put a lot of work into it and bronzed these baby shoes and, and, and also had this fishing lure on there to this day I have. And... Uh, just cracks me up when you think about it. and we that's the, how our gotcha gifts would go so you know you kind of forget about that that happened during the summer when christmas comes along and then it, he comes along and reminds you of the stupid thing you did <laughs> and he actually got me again on a different occasion where we were up in washington and we actually i had a very nice boat that i took a bunch of family out on and and uh, uh we went a long distance and uh uh uh, basically, when we got back at Des Moines Marina, as I came off the plane and the boat came down, we ran out of gas because my right in front of like 200 people and stuff, and uh, we had to get towed in, and it was just a short ways, but um, the boat didn't sh register its gas properly, and as it came off the plane and leveled out, it pretty much dried, you know, said, uh, your tanks are empty. <laughs> and so it just goes and just dies so we have this little boat that towed us in and of course sherry's dad's taking pictures like crazy of course that year he bribed someone to get my name and of course he did the great big plaque with a big poem again and had this picture of us being towed by this like little teeny little boat and uh just cracked me up anyway so to this day we got the gotcha gift so it might give you some ideas for your family holidays and stuff but 
what's so neat is, is to this day, you can even hear it in my voice, how exciting and fun and, and wholesome and, and family-ish it was, even you know through the year of uh, trials and tribulations and hard times and all that. We always all found something positive and 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 uh, to share with one another and tease each other about too and and uh, yeah, it was just precious. Of course, you know the funny thing about all that is it's all on VHF video. So I have every year um, we videotaped those Christmas get-togethers, and uh, it's kind of funny because I've got it, and luckily I got the software to do it, but I have tons and tons of these videos that I have to convert over to um, digital um, because, you know, the nephews now, which are all grown up and have their kids, they're actually doing pretty much the same thing. And guess who Santa was for them until I, until uh, this year? Uh, I was the Santa Claus that came in and took care of the nieces and nephews, which uh, I don't think they'll hear this show. Um, but, uh, for three years in a row, actually, I was the one that came in uh, at nighttime and uh, <laughs> handed out the jammies just like we did with our family. So, yeah, several generations of that. So, and I'm you know, got to be part of the, the next generation after that, which was the little kids that were there when we had it at our house is um, all grown up and they have their kids and I get to be their Santa. And if you've seen my pictures, uh, I fill out the suit very well. So, anyway, I hope that's a nice Christmas story for all you guys to uh, uh, enjoy. And, and and you can see the uh, happiness that we've always had with Christmas and, 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 and family. And um, even through tough times where one family might be having a harder time than the others. Um, <clears throat> some reason we kind of all summarized it to be something very special. And uh, just took the pain away just a little bit. And so, yeah, and uh, I just can't, I can't describe how special those days were and those uh, holidays are. And it's still, um, and watching the next generation pass that on, I, I, it kills me to realize how um, much money uh, it could cost to just do Christmases like that. Um, but uh, really with a little ingenuity and uh, realizing and teaching and guiding your kids, it doesn't matter if you're uh, um, low income or middle income or well to do, you can have these glorious Christmases uh, by just trying to make sure that you teach the kids that it's all about family. It's all about seeing each other. It's all about, uh, and most of all, um, if you have any, uh, spiritual side of it is also reminding them what we're celebrating in the first place and uh, I, I won't go into that in this show but uh, we always stop for a minute and say okay this is all fine and dandy and we got the presents and Santa and all that but do you know what this day is all about and so uh, we always try to remind our kids at least on a private uh, time is what what this was for and why we're celebrating and why we have this giving and, 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 and happiness and what are we celebrating? And so, uh, yeah. And I hope that's a reminder to everybody that listens to our show that, um, <clears throat> even if you are, your religion's a little different, um, the basis of the golden rules right there is just treating each other. Well, a chance to celebrate a chance for giving and receiving, and being with family, and uh, that's just, uh, no matter how high-tech we all get, all that, we all need that. So uh, I hope that, uh, and I, I kind of worry with us uh, getting kind of into the RV world is sometimes the parents get off on this RV and traveling and stuff. And I always hope that they're coordinating some of their adventures with family still and keeping those ties as strong as possible and and then all of us have probably issues with certain times, uh, certain family members and stuff. It's always important to try to keep those communication uh, uh, tools open. And, and, and you, know, you just never know when uh, your day's up and you want to make sure that you've said the things that you've always wanted to say to people. And there's no uh, uh, day, you know, nothing left 
uh, unsettled in case something was to happen. So anyway, holidays, man. I guess it's uh, kind of nice to point out just how special the holidays can be. And uh, you've heard me talking about uh, our holidays with our family. And it's so funny, as I was talking, I just started glowing and uh, um, and smiling and laughing. And, and so uh, I know that Christmas is uh, can also be a very tough time, too. Uh, uh, and I, it, this is not to make anything sad about anything, but I, there was one year I had lost my mother, um, in, in, I was like 14 years old at the time, um, in December. In fact, it was actually um, right around my birthday, which is uh, December 21st. So it was a very sad um, Christmas, but we still pulled something out of it. And uh, um, later on as an adult, of course, I was married and had kids already and stuff. My, I lost my father in December also uh, um, and many years later in 86, I think it was. So uh, uh, it all happened in that month of December. So still to this day, though, when I think of December, I'm not afraid of it. I, uh, I just I have so many years of wonderful experiences with the kids and family and and the way we uh, did our Christmases that um, that never overshadows it but I do realize that Christmas can be tough um, and uh, um, I hope that some of our stories bring a smile I hope that most of the Decembers and Christmases that you've had in the past uh, outshine anything that could have been negative um, it's uh, it's a special time it's like if everybody could act the way they do in the holidays, Christmas holidays and Thanksgiving, year round, just imagine what it'd be like. Um, it just everybody just brings out the best of them, and uh, and uh, I do appreciate holidays. Uh, the holiday, how special it does that. You see so much more giving, much more people, a lot more people volunteering, and uh, uh, it's kind of brings families together gives you a reason to go see your grandkids and sometimes it's a good opportunity to mend fences so yeah it's a it's a special time and so i i hope to everybody that listens to us can uh, does and, and can enjoy the holidays as fond of memories that me and sherry have of our holidays and and we to this day still try to make them as special as possible and uh, there's even times that uh, since the kids were gone and stuff, I think it was last year, a year before, uh, one of the years, uh, we actually had to uh, move stuff on Christmas Day. And we actually messed up a few of our Christmases. We were willing to because it was kind of, uh, we were doing something special. But uh, yeah, so I mean, there's a couple of kind of washed out, um, December's that we had or holidays, but uh, all in all, I gotta say that I, uh, I just it just makes me smile when I think about the holidays, and I, I hope it's that way for you too. One of the goals that I have this year is I thought it'd be kind of cool. You guys know we have uh, for those that you know, if you're new to us, we also do uh, 360 videos, which means it's they're kind of special videos, and you have to be kind of prepared when they come. And uh, they're really fun to watch on your cell phone because you can hold it up and look everywhere. But uh, there's down here in Phoenix on Cherry Street, there's a, a, a neighborhood, I guess, just goes all out with Christmas lights. And then we also have the zoo actually does a really neat Christmas light thing. So I thought it'd be kind of fun if I can find the opportunity to take a 360 camera and mount it up on the truck and and go through the Christmas lights and see... If we can, uh, how well it picks up. Um, it shouldn't be too bad because we actually did a video like that on the Vegas Strip with the 360 camera, and it came out pretty good. So uh, we're hoping to get that done this uh, for this holiday to have a special 360 Christmas lighting show, which you can just sit back, relax, put some music to it, and look at the Christmas lights at a 360 down here in Phoenix. It's just beautiful, and. Uh, yeah, and, and of course, Sherry and I will be going to our daughter's um, for Christmas. 
and probably do <laughs> traditional <laughs> nylons uh, at Christmas morning. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And uh, it's so fun. We got the two older boys, which one is 14, one 16. Uh, but we got the youngest, the newest one. Uh, he's four, be four and a half, I guess. And uh, uh, he's just kind of, and I think this is kind of, more the awakening kind of year where he kind of like realizes that, you know, and he's a full believer in the Santa Claus thing. And, and so, yeah, it's, um, should be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, he's what kind of makes the, the Christmas special part come back again. Of course, the older boys are kind of wise to everything, but, um, they do great and they get just as excited. Um, it's amazing. I watched a 16 year old who's, talking about driving already it's like oh lord <laughs> and, and uh, watching them go through that change of i want to be an adult but i don't want to be one and and, uh, and we're saying well you don't have a choice you got to face up to things and um, it's kind of fun um, well it's challenging to watch them go through that transition of my gosh i'm becoming an adult and i'm not sure if i want to but <laughs> you just can't avoid it <laughs> So yeah, um, that's kind of what we're planning on doing. And once again, I wanted to make sure that you guys have the opportunity in the comment section uh, of either the podcast or the video version of this. Um, tell us kind of th some of the things you do on the holidays, uh, whether you celebrate it in the RV, do something special, do a, uh, go to a special dinner, go to your family, um, do you decorate? Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your stories too. You've been stuck listening to mine, so I'd certainly like to hear what it's like at your home and your RV. Wanted to take the time to make sure we talk about our sponsor, which is goodmusicradio.com, which is a inner 24-7 internet radio station that we own and operate and is now part of uh, helping support some of our shows. And if you get the opportunity, go visit them at uh, goodmusicradio.com and you can download the app onto your cell phone and it'll turn your little cell phone into a transistor radio. <laughs> and you can listen to us anytime you like. You can also listen to Good Music Radio on your PC and uh, it's great stuff. We put good music on there, very little talk. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, it's just really good music and it, it's past and present. And it's relentless, just totally relentless with great music. So we're really uh, proud of that, and I think you'll love enjoy it. What's really cool about internet radio is you can play it anywhere, as long as you have internet. And uh, as long as your cell phone's picking up a little internet, you're good to go. But uh, what's cool is it doesn't matter what state you're in, it doesn't matter what city you're in, it doesn't matter what country you're in, you can listen to good music radio. So yeah, check it out at goodmusicradio.com. The other thing I wanted to remind everybody is give us a con, you know, give us a holler and, and say hello. Uh, tell us what you what's on your mind. Uh, you can reach me directly at Rob at our um, <laughs> RV Talk Radio, or you can go directly to RV Talk Radio. Go to the little contact uh, link and send us a note that way. It's private. And last but not least, don't forget we can be. You can talk to us in the comments too of our video version of this, and. Uh, if um, and also uh, Facebook, you can always go to our Facebook at RV Talk Radio or RV Travel Buddy, either one of them, and go to the message button at the top and shoot us a note that way. And that comes directly to our cell phones, so we can uh, respond to you quite quickly. And last but not least, um, don't forget that we have stickers and things like that that uh, you can snag from us. It always helps the station, and, and we also appreciate your support. And if you can uh, send uh, tips to us, we appreciate that too. It just goes straight into the show. It goes into our, uh, uh, the company uh, thing. It's not something that goes to me and Sherry directly. And uh, it just uh, always helps to just donate to the show and, and help us uh, grow and, and pay for things as we, all this stuff costs money <laughs> and we do appreciate your help. And now that the holidays are here, also be kind of curious to like, so when the holidays come, you are viewers out there. Do you do something that's special? That's unique uh, to you. If you're not doing like the traditional Christmases, cause the kids are all grown and 
Maybe some are out of the country, or maybe some's in the military or something. Uh, it could be several things. Um, do you do something special? Do you and your wife or spouse or partner uh, uh, do something unique that's only um, it's kind of driven by the holidays? Uh, do you buy something unique for your RV or go to a special vacation? Or do you leave the RV and maybe go to a, a, a breakfast house or... Um, um, or a motel to a special vacation. Uh, do you, you know, I'd be just kind of curious to find out what uh, some people do. And once again, you can leave that in the comments and, or just shoot us a note and we'll try to share some of the really nice stories or, <laughs> or I assume they're all good stories <laughs> of uh, what you guys do for the holidays that are unique, especially for our viewers. Uh, especially maybe your um, kids are all grown. Maybe some are out of the country and maybe it's just you and your spouse or partner. And, uh, you uh, have turned Christmas or the holidays into something unique uh, to you two, or or maybe you're or as being single, uh, what you know? What do you traditionally do? Do you go hook up with certain families and things like that, or go on a special vacation, get out of the RV, or stay in the RV? Uh, I'd really be interested to hear some of that. And uh, of course, you know, I'm kind of closed minded because I just know what our family does, and I and I talk to a few folks, but. Uh, it's always just great ideas to pass on to others, like what they do to make the holidays go by. Some people, I do know that the holidays are just not something that they get into and just rather see it just go by. And uh, I understand that too. Um, it all depends on the holidays may not be as uh, fond of memories as they are for you, like me and Sherry. And uh, I know some people just like to see it just get by and just, just get past the cook. And the commercialism really bothers a lot of folks. And, of course, I also had a question to folks that have Christmas trees. How in the heck do you keep your cat out of the Christmas tree? And I just, I don't know, have a solution for that. I cannot keep our cat out of the little... Now, in the RV, we set up a... Well, we'd like to, and I don't know if we'll do it or not, because... You know, since we have the option to go to my daughter's house, we can kind of enjoy their Christmassy over there. And we still put up a few little things that are out of the cat's uh, paws. But the Christmas tree, we have this little one that we buy. It's a little fiber optic tree. And uh, we try to put little bulbs on it and stuff like that. And we cannot keep the cat out of it. And she gets up there and she knocks them down and then we gets a hold of them. And I'm afraid that Cinder is going to eat one or something. And it's like, and it's not going to be a very fun Christmas if that happens. So, uh, I, I don't know. I'm getting to a point now. It's like, maybe I just should uh, get a Christmas tree and glue everything onto the branches and just somehow store it that way. And, uh. Uh, our cat has never been around a big tree either, so it'll be interesting someday when she might be around a regular full-size Christmas tree. How am I going to keep the cat out of that thing? Uh, I don't know. It's um, I, I I just I don't have a good solution for that. Everything I think of, uh, I mean, obviously when me and Sherry are home, we can kind of keep her away from it. But if we have a little Christmas tree in here and we take off for a little bit, uh, I can guarantee you that cat will be in that tree. So, yeah, that's um, that's a tough one. <laughs> I think it'd be a little easier with a bigger tree. Um, maybe not, but uh, at least with a bigger tree, I don't think she'd climb up inside it too much, as long as the bulbs were a little bit not as low that she can't bat at them. But she is a playful little bugger. And uh, I'd be curious to find out what you guys do to prevent your cats from terrorizing your Christmas tree. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, and I, I'll word it funny, but I don't, I don't want it to sound bad, but the dark side of the Christmas holidays that I think all of us should kind of try to remind ourselves of is, uh, is there's a lot of families out there that could have a sick child or uh, someone who was in an accident could be uh, health issues going on, could be a, a loss of a family member, could be financial stress, could be uh, um, a lot of things that could be a real heartache going on this time of year. And so for a lot of us that are having a great year and stuff like that, anytime that any of us can donate 
either money to those kind of uh, foundations or give our time or at least for those who are spiritual to uh, put in an extra prayer. Try to uh, take a time from the, um, take a deep breath <coughs> and get away from and quit thinking about the selfish part of, of our, our own families and take a moment if you can. And all of us, it'd be kind of a good thing to just put a positive thought out there for families that are going through a hard time. And then we have a lot of uh, 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 veterans out there uh, that are deployed right now that can't be home. And imagine how tough that must be when you're away from your spouse or partner and, or your children. And uh, or just family, and so we. Uh, I, I'm hoping that from this show that I remind all of us to at least take a moment and put out a positive thought for all those families, and uh, and realize that how fortunate we all are, um, and grateful for what we have. And uh, I know there's a lot of passionate feelings out there about uh, our country and our economy and our new leadership and stuff like that and maybe this is this age talking but it all seems to work out um, and so I'm just going to embrace our new change hopefully that some real positive things will come out of it a new kind of uh, uh, structure maybe to kind of make our our leadership and our our um, government uh, take another look at how they've been operating in the last 20, 30 years, and maybe, maybe, and this is hope, and this is as, as positive thoughts that uh, we'll see some real awakening uh, going on for our leadership, our country, and, uh, and hopefully a better place for everybody to live. And uh, we can we're embracing diversity and and the different religions and cons and, and the different um, issues going out there in the world. Uh, that you know, I do like the idea that we kind of take care of ourselves a little bit before, but never give up on helping others. And so, but you got to clean up your own house before you can uh, help clean up somebody else's house. So anyway, I'm. I, I, mean, I like to put those positive thoughts out there for for our future, and I also want to put positive thoughts out for the, where the holidays are really hard for families um, that sometimes we don't realize just how tough it can be. And uh, I mean, I think we've all, depending on your age, have gone through some tough holiday seasons, and it always uh, uh, it's always hard. But you always get through them, and sometimes the holidays can actually make it better. But in other cases, you know, it does uh, affect some people uh, in a negative way, where it could bring on depression or loneliness. Loneliness is is a hard thing to handle, and I hope you know that with us, you're not alone. We're right here. We're thinking of all of you. We're praying for everybody, and uh, we're. You know, you know how I feel about law of attraction. Um, is like attracts like. I'm putting. Out, I like to have positive thoughts for everybody out there that might be having a hard time this year. That uh, things work out, things line up for you in the universe a little bit, and shows you a way to move forward again. And uh, I'm hoping that just our thoughts and prayers and uh, anything that we can do to make your holidays better i hope uh, not only that we can do it for, help with that but the people around you and the people that listen to our show that we take a moment to either uh, or donate or go volunteer for something or find a way to make the holidays a little bit better for those that look at the holidays as a tough time to get through so anyway enough about that and just uh Merry Christmas to all those folks. Getting to the end of the show. Uh, been a fun show to do. 
If I didn't talk about RVs enough, I apologize for that, but I'm in an RV. So this whole show is based on RVs because I'm actually sitting in my RV doing the show with you. But the holidays are here. This isn't the last show we're going to talk about the holidays. This was kind of like this sh- to recognize that December is here and uh, we're all getting into Christmas mode. Uh, and you know, there's the commercialism, and but there's like fond memories, and there's the happiness, and then there's also the dark side that all of us need to recognize and try to help others with. And so, uh, with that in mind, I want to wish everybody happy holidays and a nice Christmas. I hope you get a chance to enjoy your families, enjoy each other, and that. The holidays continues to be a positive and nice thing. And and I guess the other thing is if you can carry some of that spirit with you into the rest of the year for 2017, which, of course, we got to be talking about New Year's uh, resolutions coming up pretty soon. And uh, I don't want to talk about that. But anyway, I want everybody to uh, enjoy the holidays and please take the time to give us a shout out and say hello. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. The holidays are here, and I hope everybody's of great cheer. We'll see you next week. And don't forget, buy an RV. You'll love it. Bye now.